Yes, right, which is um, a funny thing, but this chronicles something that happened all around the world in major places, including Dublin. And this is just about Dublin, it's the place where the streets had two names, and still do, one in Irish and one in English. Having said that, there's a certain amount of movements in music that have happened down through the years, and this is just one of them. And it's so perfectly put together in terms of every memory that I have, because I was involved in this all the way in terms of seven nights a week, I can't believe I did it, working and starting work at midnight, seven nights a week, every week for four years. Three in McGonagall's, just about five seconds walk from here, and then Stevens Green and uh, Parnell Street for um, Big D Radio the other four nights. And it was a really, really incredibly special time. To be honest, it's no more special a time than any other part of my life in terms of music, because uh, I wasn't there really for an awful lot of the 50s stuff, but when Elvis, I'm, really, I'm not going to give you a full history lesson here, but when Elvis started in 54, doing what he did, and the rock and roll went on, to the brilliant Bobby Sox and kind of... Um, high school music of the late 50s, that brilliant pop music in America. If you ever want to just check it out, just check out the American Confucius Double Album. It's all there. It's brilliant. Right into the 60s, which exploded, because it was just about to all end when the Beatles came along and changed the world completely. And there was all those kind of movements too. And then the late 60s, there was the hippie movement. And I'm getting to this now. Hold on a second. And the point about it was that I loved all the hippie movement music. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I don't necessarily believe Cosby was just young stuff the Vietnam War. But there was a glue there that did it all. I'm making a point here. The point being, when you get through the 1970s then and get into prog rock, which gets terrible press, I thought it was fantastic, at least 80% of it. Most people might like about 10%. I loved a lot of prog. It needed to be shifted though because everything was getting too feckin' weird. It was getting too boring. And that's what happened when this stuff came along. In Britain, maybe in 76, CBGBs and all the places in New York in 76. And we were always a little bit later, around 77. And then this really takes it up from 78 onwards. I remember him at every single thing we used to do. And he wasn't always there with a camera, by the way. He was just there with himself, hanging around like anybody else, checking out the bands and seeing what was going on. After that, and I'm getting up to now, and this is the point really that I'm trying to make, is it went into the 80s for post, whatever you'll call it, like post-punk or new wave or all the rest of it. And then late 80s, my personal stuff was brilliant stuff in Britain, from Dexies to Prefab Sprout and all that. 90s will be Manchester to me, and then uh, Nirvana, or at least, um, what do you call it, Grunge from the West Coast of America, or Britpop and all the rest. And to be honest, what I'm trying to say probably here is, it's over. It's all gone. I don't give a shag what anybody says about it at all. It's finished. And what I'm trying to say by that, I mean this. As it's finishing, there's more good music out there than there ever was. And all you need to do is buy a shovel, dig underneath, and you don't talk about daytime radio or anything. You'll find it all down there. There's fantastic music. There's at least 200 bands from Texas alone in the last year that have released albums. And I'm told they're great. I will never hear them. I'll be dead before I get to it. There's so much great music out Same there. Same in Ireland, which you don't hear as well. I know, you don't hear it. There's nothing on radio, and even Phantom went last week, and it was hardly on the fourth page, let alone the front page of any of the papers. But that's just the way it happens to be. There is no movement anymore, so what I'm trying to say is rock is dead, but the music is still very much alive. And what I mean by rock is dead is this. Because this is not the music. There's no music in this thing here. But it's what it all meant to so many people here. I see Tony down there at the back. I see Ken there in the middle. And Lois more beside. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. You were there for the whole thing about this. You injected this shit into your blood. It was so important. It was the vinyl years. Whatever you want to call it. You'd be up in advance. You'd be up whatever. And I was even too old for all that shit, to be perfectly honest. Because I was. I was too young to be a hippie. But I was too old to be this. But I was overseeing it all. And I was part of it all. And it was very much completely, absolutely essential. And what I'm trying to say is now, music's not essential anymore to anybody. I'm sorry, it just isn't. People just don't care anymore. People are getting music for free, and therefore music has been devalued. It is as simple as that. There's a, an audience out there who just take it as a kind of a, a, a background or a backdrop to their lives, and the whole thing has gone. There's no movements anymore. I mean, check out anyone that was there recently. Like I said, great bands from Brooklyn in New York in the last few years. They were really brilliant music, but it wasn't a movement. It didn't happen. It didn't... It didn't unite a culture, it didn't do the rockers and mods in the 50s, it didn't do what the Beatles did in the 60s, it didn't change culture, it didn't do any of that kind of stuff. This changed everything. For a moment in time, for so many people in this room, it was just absolutely there. And this guy has captured it completely because if you think about it, if I'm going to talk about history, I might as well talk about geography. I had a geography teacher who always said, a picture of paints a thousand words. There's not that many actual words in this here, but there's a trillion words in it in terms of what's there. Every single bits and pieces, and by the way, some of the photos aren't necessarily Actually, I put this um, professionally brilliant, and that's the way it should be. It's very DIY, it's very punk, and it's very, I'll just do it now. And I remember McGonagall's doing all this stuff four nights a week, and this guy would be over trying to get under the tree. Do you remember the tree on the stage? McGonagall's had a tree in the middle of the stage, and he'd be up there. Trying to yeah, it was ridiculous. I remember John Rothbard, Wild Willie Barrett swinging at him, and they broke it and everything. 
But it was just, it was just, oh, I could think of a million things in a million places and a million venues. And it's all here, every little bit of it. I'm not just talking about the U2 stuff and the houses and that kind of stuff. I'm talking about all the other stuff and the fans that came in from Strangers to Tom Robinson and everything else that's in there. And it is a brilliant <coughs> chronicle in a moment in time. And I mean, this will be an heirloom to Patrick in years to come. It'll be an historical document to this country in years to come as well. It's absolutely perfect and it's the way it should be. And I'm sorry if I'm bemoaning the death of Rob, but I'm just putting it into some kind of context that it really used to mean something in a unifying kind of way. And the fact that it's all gone doesn't worry me. I'm too old to get involved in any kind of movement anyway, so it doesn't matter. But I mean, the music, as I say, is still there. It's still brilliant and still great. It's just ironic that the whole thing in terms of rock and what it used to mean is dead. And by the way, this was rock too, regardless of not being for progressive. It was rock music or whatever. So anybody who's never stood, stood outside advanced records worried about some brand new flexi disc that was in pink from a manga comic in Japan and giving out about the B-side not being the right one and all the rest of it, which I do remember those days very well, can just uh, luxuriate in between the pages of this great book. Well done, Patrick, and uh, congratulations. Thanks, folks. Yay! Yay!